Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to part two. Holy shit, I can't fucking find my seat in here. Um, yeah, part two of the DVDs, so... Um, <laughs> fucking stack is fucking massive again. No, I'm just gonna press that. I gotta fucking time myself, man. I only got 30 minutes on these cameras, that's why. So, and I, these videos just go way too fucking long. Alrighty, so getting right into this shit. Uh, from E1, uh, I believe this one came out in 2013, um, it says 2010 Extreme Video, 2013 release, so maybe this is a couple, few years old, but, uh, another zombie film called Eaters, <laughs> fuck man, there's so many of these low budget films, uh, presented by UA Bowl presented this film, so, who knows what this one's gonna be like, but, you know, I'm always intrigued by these low budget kinda biter films. Uh, next up from E1 is uh, the newly released Dark Skies film uh, starring Kerry Russell and Josh Hamilton. Um, it's like an alien invasion kind of kind of deal. Asian, Asian, alien haunting film. Um, I don't know, man. I'd heard a lot of good things about this movie. I've even seen this, this film on people's top tens list this year. And I gotta say, man... This movie kind of bored the shit out of me. I didn't. I thought it could have been a lot better. I, I think the pacing was kind of, kind of shitty. I don't know, man. I just the overall movie I wasn't really a big fan of, to be honest. Um, I, I really wanted to like this because it's been a while since I've kind of seen a film like this, like these alien kind of abductions, kind of you know fucking with you thing. Um, but yeah, it just it didn't work for me, man. I, by the end of the movie, I was just like, yeah. Not for me. Uh, next up, E1, or next up from E1 is uh, Zombie Massacre, of course, from 2013. Uh, another film that UA Bull presents, so this has potential to be real shitty, too. Um, I think I've actually heard pretty decent things about this movie, to be honest. Like, not so bad, so. I don't know, another, another fucking zombie film. Now, I had to grab this movie just because of the title. It made me laugh. Uh, it's called Mexican Werewolf in Texas. <laughs> uh, shit, it still makes me laugh when I say it. I don't know what's so funny about that, but it just sounds funny. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about this movie. I've never even fucking heard of this before. I just, I, I seen Werewolf in the title, and I was like, yeah, I gotta get that. Everybody knows I'm a huge Werewolf fan. Uh, I love Werewolf films, so... But yeah, this one just looks real low budget kind of shit. And man, the werewolf on the back, if I could show you this, it looks so bad. But I don't know. Give that one a shot. It's like dirt cheap. I think I paid like a dollar for that. Uh, next up is a film called Experiment in Torture. Now, I'm wondering if this is a torture film. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not overly the biggest fan of torture films, to be honest. Sometimes they, sometimes they are pretty decent, but m there's more misses than hits with me. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to think about this one. It was, again, real fucking dirt cheap. So Here's a film I've heard mostly bad things about, but I wanted to see it for myself because the title intrigued me. And that's called The Pumpkin Carver. I've heard it's complete shit, but, you know, I always have to... If people are talking real bad about a film, I always have to watch it. It always piques my interest more when people talk shit about it. Um... So yeah, the pumpkin carver. Yeah, I, I, I. So yeah, it is actually based on. It's a Halloween prank turns deadly. Okay. Halloween themed slasher film. Uh, next up is uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven: The New Blood. Uh, this was just the last one I needed from all these um, these deluxe editions. Of course, again without slipcover. Uh, I have all of them, and I only have one slipcover. It's fucked up. Uh, people are probably, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, you just got the Blu-ray box set, but I've, I've been trying to collect these for fucking ever, just slowly here and there, and I've been getting them for, like, dirt cheap, so, um, yeah, part seven, the new blood, but just to add to the collection, now I got all of the special editions, plus the other two box sets, fuck, I don't know, um, I don't know what I'm doing with myself anymore, um, next up is a slasher film from... I totally just forgot where this is from now. Uh, from Sweden. Blood Runs Cold. Uh, this is another film that we talked about on the podcast, 22 Shots of Moods and Horror. Um, 
Uh, apparently this movie was done for like five thousand uh, dollars you know it's it's not a bad film it's just there's no there's no story to it you know it's simply just a dude knocking off people in this house the setting's really fucking cool though man it's it's it feels really cold apparently it was like really fucking cold when they were filming this like minus 30 kind of cold um but you know the, the the kills are actually pretty well done for being such a low budget film. But the problem is, is there's nothing there. There's no substance to it. You know, it's just you need something more. You know, um, the killer is kind of a mystery, also, um, to what exactly he is. Uh, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. I I couldn't fully recommend this, but you know, for what the the budget that they had for this, I think they did a pretty good job, but. I just wish there was more story. I, the script was just a little tighter. Uh, next up is a Richard Griffin film called Splatter Disco. I've been after this one for a fucking long time. I love Richard Griffin films, man. He's done a lot of really good shit. Um, uh, I just realized that Debbie Rose Sean is in this movie. That's fucking awesome. I love that. <laughs> love her. Um, yeah, released by, I think Shock Rama put this out. But yeah. Splatter Disco should be awesome. I think Vance actually recommended this to me a long time ago, and I think that was the reason why I was after it. But, but I'm a big fan of Richard Griffin, so got to check that one out. Uh, next up is a film called Black House. Uh, I think this is an Asian film. Um, this is Korean. So this is a Korean film, uh, which I know absolutely nothing about. It looked cool, though. I like the title. It's got black in the title, so that's pretty cool. Um... But yeah, just again, another cheap film to pick grab, so picked up that one. Uh, I've been recently seeing people showing this one. I've seen a couple people show this off for some random reason. Uh, this movie's not even that new. 2006, and it's called Five Girls. It's starring Ron Perlman. I believe this is some kind of demonic... Um, it's sets... It's, uh takes place in a fucking Catholic school, so yeah, it's supernatural kind of demonic possession kind of deal, I think, um, yeah, I don't know, these movies can be hit and miss, especially the, a lot of these newer ones, I like these type of, these type of films that came out in the 70s, very cultish and stuff, but, Five Girls, get, uh, I guess I'll give that one a go, um, this is obviously just another edition of the, it's my second favorite horror film of all time, and I just never had this edition, uh, the MGM release of Return of the Living Dead, I've just always wanted this cover art, I've got, Fuck, I have so many dishes in this movie, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, but, really, can I not... You can't have enough Return to the Living Dead laying around. And this edition, this copy that I got used, like, again, yeah, it looks fucking brand new. It's one of these super... F I didn't realize, but these things are like the flipper disc. It doesn't even look like it was ever played. It's crazy. It's not even a fingerprint. There's not even a mark on it. Um, but it doesn't really matter. And, man, this one almost... Is this the glow-in-the-dark one? I don't know. It looks like it glows in the dark, but yeah. Return to the Living Dead. Uh, next up is the fourth and apparently final chapter in this series, in this franchise, and that's the Lake Placid. Uh, I, I think I heard this one was pure rubbish, too. Straight up Bullocks, but um, yeah, it's got Robert England, which is pretty fucking cool. But, you know, I always enjoyed the first Lake Placid films. Man, the, the sequels were so bad, so poorly done. Um, still kind of enjoyable, but I really, really love Killer Croc films, man. I, I, it doesn't matter how bad they are, I always have to grab them. Um, I'm sure they'll make another one of these, too. I bet you they do. Uh, next up is another Christmas-themed horror film I reviewed on the 25 Days of Christmas Horror. Not sure what day it was, but uh, Felicia Rose stars in this, of course, from um, Sleepaway Camp. And it's called Deadly Little Christmas. Now, I thought this movie was decent. I didn't think it was overly that great. It's like a shot on, I guess, digital, not video, but shot digitally or whatever. Um, very, very low budget. It's not bad, though. It's not bad. There, this, it definitely has its problems, but it has some redeemable qualities, too. So, uh, But, I don't know, man. Christmas-themed horror films, I'm always looking forward to watching this. It was decent, though. If you want to know more, check out the review. Go into depth on it. Uh, next up is a film I never fucking owned. I haven't even seen this movie in so many years. And it's uh, Jack Nicholson, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Wolf. Um, yeah, I fucking don't remember this movie at all. But uh, I definitely need to revisit this one as it's, you know, like a werewolf film. So, yeah. 
it's kind of weird, you know, Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer, two, like, real huge A-list actors, I guess, even at the time, doing a film like this, but very interesting. Uh, next up is a film I can't quite pronounce, but this movie always sells for, like, 30 bucks. It seems like it's always going for, like, 20 to 25, 30 bucks, and, well, I got this movie for, I think I paid $6 total for it, and it's called Damn GM. I'm not exactly 100% sure if you can see that right there. Let me know how you pronounce this because it's an Asian film. I don't know much about it, but I always saw it. And it was always listed for so much money out of print. And then I, I seen the price had gone way, way down on it, plus 40% off. So um, I decided to pick it up. It looks like it's really cool, though. It looks like it's fucking weird and different. Something to, something to do with like a mountaintop in Japanese or a giant stone statue. I don't know. Something to do with like a big stone statue, I think, or something. But um, it, I don't know. It looks fucking cool, man. It looks real cool. Uh, next up is uh, a film that was recommended to me on Body Bags on recommendation uh, for recommendation week, which is actually this week, um, by Emperor Corndog. And the funny thing was, when he had recommended me this movie, I had just ordered it. And that's uh, Wes Craven, Eddie Murphy, and Angela Bassett's Vampire in Brooklyn. Now, I know a lot of people dislike this movie, but to be honest, I think this movie's a lot of fun. And I think it's so fucking quirky, man. Like, Wes Craven doing a vampire film with Eddie Murphy. Like, what in the shit is going on there? Um, this is kind of at the point of Eddie Murphy's career when everything kind of kind of went south for him. This is mid-90s. I think by the, like, a couple years after this is when he started doing the shitty kids movies and he never recovered. Um, but I love the quote on the back, Eddie Murphy's best ever. I highly doubt that, but uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty fun, I think this is a fun movie, it's not a great film by any means, it's just a, it's just a personal, not favorite of mine, but I, I like it though, it's fun. Uh, next up from Sub Rosa Studios is a double feature, uh, Sub Rosa Cinema and Grindhouse presents double feature uh, of Campfire Tales and Kiss Daddy Goodbye. Now I have a regular copy of Campfire Tales on DVD already, I picked this up for Kiss Daddy Goodbye because this was like two bucks. They do these double features so bizarre. I mean, <laughs> this is the way it came. I don't know if this is originally how it came, but I don't know. I thought that was fucking weird how that came, but uh, I picked it up for Kiss Daddy Goodbye. I think it's like a killer kid film or something like that. Yeah, twins or something, something rather, but Sub Rosa Studios, you know, what you say, you know what you're getting yourself into with those type of films. Very low budget, but they put out a lot of really good stuff, though, to be honest. Uh, next up is a, a fucking black, exploitation horror film called Blackenstein. Uh, I believe that Tom, Terrifier Tom, showed this a while back. And I've actually had this on, on a list again forever when he, and he showed it. I just It just made me laugh. Um, so I actually ended up picking this up for about three or four bucks too, so <laughs> if I had to grab it. I am super stoked to watch this. I love Frankenstein films. Um, Frank, the original Frankenstein film was actually one of my favorite films ever. Um, so any type of like spin-offs and whatever, I, I'm always intrigued to see. But Blackenstein, of course. Gotta check that shit out. Uh, next up is uh, fucking Decoys. Uh, another movie I haven't seen in a long time. I gotta revisit this one. I think I saw it right when it came out. It says 2003. It's about right, I guess, when I last seen it. So um, uh, I know this one's really weird. It's just a different type of film. Uh, JP just reviewed this one on Body Bags, actually. And, of course, since I grabbed decoys, I had to grab the sequel. And I grabbed both these, I think, for four bucks total. Um, yeah, and I've never seen the sequel. Never seen the, the sequel to this, so, yeah, I don't know what it's like. Uh, next up is a film that was recommended by one or X one James. Uh, loosely recommended. He showed this off in his Mummy Collection, and I had my eye on this one for a while. And I didn't even realize this movie was actually made in the 90s. I always thought this was an older movie because the cover just makes it look like it's older for some weird reason. But yeah, uh, The Mummy Lives starring Tony Curtis. This is from 1993. Um, yeah, I've really always wanted to check this out, man. Uh, it says it's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. Words from Mummy. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, Mummy Lives. Looking forward to checking that one out right there. Uh, next up is, I think this film came out last year called Bigfoot County. Um, yeah, uh, for, I want to say that maybe Cool Dude or has a part in this movie, maybe this one, I don't know, maybe it's not this movie, but, uh, Bigfoot County, I don't know, these Bigfoot movies, man, most of them are pure shit, but 
had to grab it super cheap uh, another one I don't know shit about released by Artiston called Deep in the Woods looks like a really it looks like a typical backwoods slasher type deal uh, that could be good sometimes I grab these movies and they're actually a lot better than I you know think that they're going to be uh, this actually has quite a few special features not really actually it looks like there's uh, but yeah Deep in the Woods uh, next up is uh, Razor Teeth uh, this one looked interesting, man. I saw, you know, based on a smoking true story. Um, I don't know, man, exactly what the Razor Eaters... Not really too sure what this is about, but, uh, I don't know, released by Echo Bridge. Uh, next up is, I think this is like a holiday-themed zombie film, actually. Silent Night, Zombie Night. I know it takes place, it says a week before Christmas, so... Um, who knows, this might make it into... Uh, the 25 days of Christmas for next year. I think I'm going to have enough to do another one. So, um, Silent Night, Zombie Nights. Uh, I just don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, now, I can never pronounce this fucking title of this movie, man. Tardisan, Tardan Asian Extreme Edition of Tetsuo the Iron Man. Um, this is a... This is, I really enjoy this movie. Uh, I... It seems like some people kind of have mixed opinions on this shit. I think it's pretty cool, but uh, uh, I, I can't remember when this movie actually originally came out. But yeah, very cool. That that actually came with a slip box, which is pretty cool. So yeah. Uh, next up is the out of print film from 1988 called Scarecrows. I absolutely love this movie. Fucking awesome. Uh, it's such a great atmosphere. Such a dark film. All takes place at night. Very, very good Scarecrow film, man. Fucking awesome. Uh, next up is a film called Terror of Dracula. This is uh, from 2012. Now, I had no idea what this was when I ordered it. I just saw the title. Um, kind of read the quick synopsis of it. And I was like, okay. This movie looks really low budget, but it looks like it's older. It's kind of written in that older font stuff. But this is like a brand new film. So, um, And ironically enough, I've seen a couple people show this one off recently too with a different cover though. So I don't know what edition this is or the, the other editions that people were showing off. But... Terror of Dracula. If you know anything about this one, let me know. Uh, next up is the next three I got from my man, Jeremy. Uh, he sent me the Asylum tapes. Um, I've yet to watch this one. Um, this one looks... It looks like it's pretty decent. Uh, you know, I think it's like one of these found footage kind of haunted... Found footage films. The Asylum tapes. Uh, he also sent me Dorm. Um, this is another one of these Tartan Asian Extreme films. Very cool because... I seem to be collecting a lot of those. And he also sent me Dead Mind, which looks like a fucking batshit crazy kind of action horror. Everything mixed into one ball of fun. Um, then we got The Legend of Hell House from the early 70s, I believe. This movie came out in 1973 or 74. This is a great paranormal uh, investigative type film. This is actually one of the better ones. This is a really fun film. If you've never seen The Legend of Hell House, definitely give this a shot. It's fucking awesome. Um, The Seventh Hunt, I uh, don't know shit about this one, but uh, I see it's a film from Australia, um, yeah, I don't really know what this is, I don't know if this is a vampire or what the fuck, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this one, grab it because it obviously looked cool at the time, like I said, I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore, um, Zombie Nation, another fucking zombie film from 2006, so, uh, I have so many zombie films to watch. You might as well just do a zombie marathon or some shit. Um, Melissa George in Triangle. This actually was the lenticular slip box case I got for a couple bucks. Uh, I've seen this movie before. Um, this is a really fucking weird movie. It's almost like it's like a horror version of Groundhog Day in a way. Um, this one is a, it's, it's kind of a head trip because you don't really exactly know what's going on. And I don't really think you really ever do. Um, from what I remember, but I remember kind of enjoying it because it was just so trippy, and I really enjoy like really weird fucking structured films and stuff. But I don't know, Triangle was kind of kind of different. I think it I th does it actually take place in Bermuda Triangle. I don't know. Uh, next up is Dark Harvest. I noticed a bunch of people have been picking up Dark Harvest too lately. <laughs> um, I will have to eventually get that. I heard it's just pure shit. I know Philip grabbed it and he said it was pure shit. Um, but of course, if I have the first one, I have to have the second one, no matter how bad it is. But I'm a big fan of these Scarecrow films, man, so 
Yeah, and last up for the regular DVDs here is Vacancy 2. Uh, I grabbed this because I have the first one. I am a completist, so... And I have seen this movie, and I remember not really liking this one that much. But I can't remember if I'm getting this movie mixed up with something else. But, I don't know. Okay, holy shit. Alrighty, so for the uh, box sets... Actually, no, yeah, box sets and TV series here. First up is American Horror Story on DVD. Um, I didn't grab it on Blu-ray because... I don't really care, you know, TV shows on DVD are fine for me, I don't really need to, to grab them on Blu-ray, this was really cheap, I think it was only 10 bucks, so, um, yeah, I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to checking this out, I'm just waiting for Asylum, the second season, to go down in price, so I'll pick that up eventually too, but, yeah, this looks actually pretty fun, and I think I've actually heard that uh, Asylum is actually better. And, of course, I had to pick up the final season of Dexter, so now I have the complete series. Um, I'm about halfway through this, so don't spoil it for me. I don't know what happens in the end. Um, I've stayed spoil-free from everybody, which is awesome. And I'm actually really enjoying the season. I think it's actually kind of intriguing. It's interesting. Um, but, yeah, Dexter, one of my favorite shows of all time. I absolutely love that show. I grabbed season seven of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, one of my favorite comedies. Uh, I still need to grab season eight. It's just really expensive right now. Um, <laughs> fuck, what can I say? This is one of the funniest shows ever. It's basically Seinfeld on crack. Someone quoted that one time, and I was like, that's the most perfect quote ever. Um, yeah, what can I say? I still haven't, I haven't watched it yet, though, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, the complete 16th season of South Park. So, again, I've got all the South Park seasons. One of my, this is probably my favorite, like, animated show of all time uh what can i say man this season right here had some of the funniest fucking like not some of the funniest like some really really good episodes the very first episode reverse cowgirl with fucking butters taking shits on the toilet backwards i just absolutely fucking killed myself laughing on that so funny um but yeah 16th season actually really fun stuff really fun stuff Sir Sarcasta Ball, that was the episode I was trying to think of. Sarcasta Ball was so fucking funny. Absolutely amazing episode, but if, you, if you're if down with South Park, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. Um, next up is the complete series of Thriller, hosted by Barless, Borless Karloff. Uh, now, my man Aaron Pin, he actually showed this off in a video a while ago and recommended that we pick this up, and so I put it on a Christmas list, and lo and behold, uh, my parents actually picked it up for me. Man, this box got, like, trashed in the being sent here though not trash but just kind of corners are kind of kind of dinged up a little bit but yeah i'm really happy to have this i've watched a bit of this and it's just so so much fun uh released by image comes all and just like that very nice set highly recommend this man thanks again aaron if you're watching this um thanks for recommending this i i was after this before and i never um i never wanted to pick it i didn't pick it up because it was kind of expensive so so I let someone else buy it for me. That's what you do. <laughs> and last up for the box sets is something that I fucking almost shit myself when they when I heard that it was being announced and released by Shout Factory of all companies because I'm a big, big supporter of Shout, Shout Factory and, of course, Scream Factory, um, is the complete series of Beetlejuice on DVD, um, the animated series. I fucking love this show so much. I've been watching this and just... Oh, it just makes me feel like a kid again. It's just I love it so much. And of course, Scream or Shell Factory does such an amazing job with the releases. You know, they just look so good. Um, you know, everything that they touch is just awesome. You know, so four discs, four disc sets, um, the complete series. Yes, I'm just so fucking happy to have this. Absolutely love this. Um, this is from my parents. My parents are awesome. They love me. So yeah, um, that is going to do it for part two of the DVDs, and we're going to move on to part three and do the Blu-rays, and there's quite a, fit of, quite a few Blu-rays to show off, um, so we're going to get right into that, but yeah, anyways guys, I'll see you in part three of this update, peace.